Welcome back, everyone, to Beholder to No One presents Behold Clear Light. I'm your dungeon master, Ryan Williams, and joining me here are Nikki, Rissa Lanner, Greg, Greg Thos Steady Hand, Ashley, Emmy Frankincense, and Keith. Seuss. All right, are we all ready? Hell yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yep, let's do it. Hey, y'all, it's Malira again. Listen. These folks have been catching me up on what's been happening lately, and it's a lot to wrap your head around. Emmy's speaking some nonsense about how everything's a warlock. Like, what does that even mean? And and Greg, though, says he had a vision of how the calamity happened with the help of that little machine he's got. Seuss has been saying that the, the tunnels underneath the city are breathing. Thinks there there might be something out there. And Rissa, who knows what Rissa's up to these days. Visiting family, I think. Uh, betcha she's having big revelations about that, too. The way things have been going. Well, I, I'm just trying to hold all this craziness together. We'll see how it goes. A lot of things happened last time. And you are currently still in the middle of your uh, mandatory week off given to you by... Melira. So, Emmy, you discovered that it seems that every living thing outside the walls, including the plants and trees, are somehow a warlock to something. That doesn't make any sense. Gregthos, you made contact with something from another realm, perhaps, who explained to you sort of what happened a long time ago, maybe, and also made several other discoveries. Seuss, you went down beneath the city into Subway, the, what they call the tunnels down there, and realized that you could hear something breathing in the tunnel. And Rissa, you discovered that the strange man you met outside leading that group through the mist was a doctor who had come to see your mother when she was struggling with the pregnancy. So, what do we want to do next? Well, first, Rissa wants to ask her father a question despite not really wanting to see him. All right. Last we left off, you were in your parents' home yes. talking to your mother, and you can surmise that your father is probably in his office. So you make your way over through the living room, past one of the bedrooms into his office, and you can see the light shining through underneath the door, so you know he's in there. And when you walk in, he sort of looks up at you uh, with that mild, annoyed face that he always seems to have whenever you're talking to him in general. He says, uh, uh, can I help you with something? I wanted to tell you that I'm home, but also I had a question. And I thought that maybe, since you have so many contacts in this world, in this city, you might have heard something. He sort of puts down his pen and puts one of his hands on his chin and says, All right, what do you need? Have you ever heard of a company called Hawthorne Industries? Um, no. That doesn't sound familiar to me. Hmm. Okay. I figured if anybody knew, you would, so I might as well ask. But I already said hello to Mother, and I will be in town for the week. So if ah. you would like to have family dinner... I promise not to argue with you if you promise not to argue with me, as long as you don't start anything. We can have a lovely family dinner, all three of us. He puts his hands on the desk and says, that sounds nice. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to ask me? Was there anything else I wanted to ask him? I think that was it, right? I mean, you found out uh, that, I don't know if you want to ask him about the doctor, but, um... That mm. is another piece of information that Rissa might want to know, depending on... Or maybe she doesn't want to, him to know that she knows. That's up to you. No, I think that's all. All right. I'll say my goodbyes. I will see you at dinner, then, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> yes, I I'm already leaving and closing the door. <laughs> is there a person in town that would know where particular people are? Like, they're, like, good at knowing where people live. Uh, like, tracking people down? Um, I mean, there are probably plenty of people who could do that. Actually, no, I think I know who would know. I want to go find Emmy. All right. Emmy might know. I'm trying to work out the timeline a little bit. I would say probably, like, last night, you got a strange message from Emmy saying that, like, everything's outside is a warlock. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> You're like, Emmy, it's like two in the morning. <laughs> like, come on. I'm, I'm sleeping off a hangover. 
<laughs> but everything's a warlock. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Emmy. Just, just let it. It's okay. <laughs> so yes, but yeah, you know where Emmy's laboratory is. I don't think you would know where his home is, but you know that he spends a lot of time in his lab, so you could probably find him there. All right. I don't know where Seuss would be, and I do know where Gregos is, but I'm gonna go see Emmy first. So I'll make my way down to his uh, laboratory. Okay. So last night, Emmy, you made an insane discovery. What are you doing today? Probably passed out. Like, I know that elves normally don't sleep, but with all the stuff that he's been having to go through with, like, having to try to appease his family and trying also to figure out this whole thing about this warlock shenanigans, he's probably has taken a little bit of that drug <laughs> and oh <passing>. dear <laughs> and he's probably and he's probably just face down in his own drool just like sleeping on the table <laughs> sweet uh, you know what if you're using the dream to give yourself a wonderful night's sleep i'm gonna have you roll a constitution saving throw for me real quick <laughs> okay <laughs> oh this is gonna end real well <laughs> who were those people that you met that you were like oh i didn't realize you were there it was like a couple episodes back yeah, you're going to have sex with those people now. Have fun. <laughs> I, I thought the elves didn't get affected in, in a negative way. They just got to dream. No, that's what it's for. It's like, it's so that they can sleep. Yeah, it was originally designed so that elves could experience sleeping and dreaming, which normally they can't. Right, yeah. and I thought that only non-elves had like Yes, the yes, it, ha- it has the worst effects on, on non-elves. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. But it still could, something could probably happen with Something them. still <laughs> might happen, we'll find out. Well, I got a natural 20, so. Beautiful. <laughs> I got a 22. Okay, so <laughs> you are just having the most wonderful dream, and that's not something you do very often. Like, you can have dreams in your trance occasionally but they call them visions of course because they're elves and but this is different like you feel like you're really there and so you are dreaming you are being awarded your own laboratory like you have like a section like an office in the uh the doctor's guild and there is an area that you're allowed to use that other people rarely come into but like you are being given your own building and they are just celebrating the fact that you found a cure to the corruption in the mist and everyone is just singing your praises and your mother and father are like teary-eyed watching you being awarded a trophy for best doctor <laughs> and also one of the bullies that made fun of you in uh when you were in school is also there just like absolutely sobbing with joy looking at you receiving this award and then you awaken to Rissa sort of like tapping you on your shoulder and you're back sitting at your desk in this <laughs> shitty world. I, I, I kind of like and I'm in a daze and I'm like oh thank you thank you Mr. Mr. Ethan Hawk thank you for this award oh of course I'll, I'll go on a date with you thank you for asking. <laughs> 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 it's just like, can I interrupt something? Oh, uh, no, um, yeah, what? Sorry. I, I was, uh, I was, I was studying. Uh, hey, I... what's Rissa's passive perception real quick? <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. It's a 12. Okay. Uh, never mind. <laughs> or an 11. Wisdom is oh. not my strong suit. <laughs> All right, gotcha. <laughs> Uh, how can I help you, Rissa? And he's just like, just kind of like touching his eyes, like trying to get whatever like goop is in his eyes. This is weird for you, by the way, Rissa. Like, elves don't usually sleep, so you're like, what? <laughs> but never mind. But uh, continuing on. So, I had a question for you because I came to a realization yesterday while talking to my mother. Do you know of a Dr. Foyas? Do I? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have you roll, let me think. Would this be, I don't know if it'd be his, I don't think it's history to like know a person. Uh, I'm going to have you roll just a straight charisma check, not any skill or anything. Just roll a d20, add your charisma modifier. Okay. That's a 19. Nice. 19 total? Okay. Mm -hmm. You've heard of uh, a Dr. Foyas before. He uh, is a specialist in surgically reattaching limbs, but he uses magic in order to do it. He's not just a regular surgeon. Like, he's a cleric like you, actually, although not very much like you. He's known for being somewhat charismatic, but having a very private life. Like, a lot of people like him in his public uh, appearance, but people don't really know anything about his, his private life. Like, even to, like, 
where he lives is kind of a mystery. Okay, well, I will tell her this <laughs> without having to repeat you. So here's the thing. Have I ever told you about my little brother? Um... I don't think so. So, long story short, my mother really, really, really wanted another child. And there was quite a few doctors when I was going through 8 to 12 years old that visited our home. And I realized that Dr. Foyas was one of them. This is important because you remember that hooded figure that we met over by the Titan? Mm, vaguely. That's Dr. Foyas. Really? And he went and visited my mother yesterday before we got back. I never saw him as the adventuring type. Well, evidently he is. And also, I want to know why he's visiting my mother 18 years after the fact. Hmm. Yeah, that is very strange. I mean, I may have some contacts in the Doctor's Guild to be able to see if I could find out where he is. He's a very private man. But I know some people that might be able to track him down if we need to. I would like to know where he lives or at least where he could be found, because I very much would like to talk to him. Well, you know the hospital where he works, uh, Emmy, with a oh. 19. Yeah, you know, you don't know where he lives, but you know where he works. Does he seem like the type of person that's like me, that likes to be more at his job than he does at his own home? Not nearly as much as you, but it seems reasonable to be able to find him there at some point. Okay. I do know where he works, so, I mean, if, unless you want to visit him at his house, I can at least take you to where he may be now. I'm fine with visiting him at work. What's better than ruining... No, I mean, just saying hello. And do we even know if this, like, party came back yet, or we have no idea? <laughs> like, we don't even... We only saw the halfling. <laughs> you specifically half said that Foya spoke to my mother, she, she said the day before, right? Or, like, earlier? Oh, yeah, uh, he, he came to visit recently. Oh, okay, so we do know. You know he's back in the town, yes. Okay, so yeah, we can, um, I mean, whatever you want, I'm I'm pretty much done here. Uh, and he's like, <laughs> as he's kind of like cleaning up the table a little bit, and he's like, um, we can go whenever you want, or if you want me to come with you, I don't, I don't have to. I can just tell you where it is, or if you want me to come with you, I can. Why don't you come with? You might have some sway to get into the proper places. Uh, should we get the other two? I mean, we can if you want to. This is this is your little quest, so I'll do whatever you need me to do. Out of character, do y'all want to be here? <laughs> I mean, Sue says other ideas, but okay. I'm good with whatever. He can still try. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe I just confront him. You and Emmy are heading to the the hospital where uh, Doctor Foyas works. Yes. All right. So while that's happening, while they're on their way, what is Greythos doing? Just last night. You had this insane vision with all these revelations. Okay, so that was the previous night. Got it. I was trying to figure out the timeline myself. Okay. So immediately following the vision and the absolutely horrifying thought of waking up to my master sitting on my chest, <laughs> <laughs> I sleep not super well, but I notice that when I, when I wake up, I roll myself out of bed. It's, it's becoming more and more difficult day by day, especially with all the exercise I've been getting as of late. So I get up and I notice my... Uh, my robes are stained. Evidently, at some point during the night, something happened, and I, I, I get up out of bed. I leave to go speak with my master and just try to try to piece everything together. So I'll I'll trudge over to him. I'm assuming he's either awake or I I will happily wake him up. One of the two. Uh, no, he's already awake when you arrive. Okay. So robes stained. Uh, I walk out to to speak with him, and I go. There's been a, a lot happening over these past couple weeks, and um, I have a lot to think about. Uh, for example, I found out that I'm a conduit, and I'm still not 100% sure what that means, but come back here only to find that you are also a conduit, and there's this weird connection between us and the stars and all this other stuff, and it, it I don't know, I feel like it's just now hitting me, like, just the weight of all of this information that has been pouring into my being these past couple weeks, and... Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just a lot to take in. Yes, revelations can be troubling sometimes, even if they are positive revelations. But this, it is difficult to even know if this is a positive revelation. I have spent time thinking about it, and it seems to me that what we were shown, the star symbols that whatever that being was showed us, indicate what happened to cause this calamity that has engulfed the world. 
we now know, at least vaguely, what happened, what was the cause. And it seems like most problems, it was, once again, greed. It is troubling to think about. It seems even in those advanced times, before the world was shaken, we had not, we could not overcome ourselves. That is what troubles me. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, do not mean to uh, drag you down into my uh, thoughts. Oh no, please, drag away. <laughs> if I could be anywhere except my own head right now, I'll take it. <laughs> well, uh, it seems to me that somehow you and perhaps I, we are involved in the salvation of this world. That is what I think. I have always felt that something was coming, something for us, something was going to be changing, something that was going to alter the world as a whole for ill or good. And it seems that we get to have a hand in it somehow. It is difficult to understand exactly what that means. And Kai, just wrapped around your chest, says, Ah, uh, yes, well... Oh god, I forgot you were here! <laughs> I understand it is easy to forget I am around because I usually only speak when spoken to. I apologize for startling you. Fine. However, what I was saying was that since you are conduits, you are the pathway through which the divine beings can re-enter this reality if the conditions become sufficient for such an occasion. Yeah, see, that's just one of the many things that have been going through my head. Well, unfortunately, it is difficult to know what exactly will cause those conditions to occur. That is what we need to discover. Well, <sighs> we need to figure out what exactly is keeping divinity from entering this plane of existence. Well, Master, I know you don't usually leave the your home here, but uh, any chance you'd want to tag along, figure this out? Do you mean to go outside the walls with you? I mean, it's pretty horrifying out there, but we could use all the help we could get. And I figure if one conduit is good, two is only better. I would love to assist you, Greg Those, but I think my, my days of dangerous expeditions are long behind me. Neither of us are young men anymore, I know, but... I mean, speak for yourself, but go on. <laughs> I don't think that I have it in me to follow you where you plan to go. No, that's fair. It was, uh, honestly a little silly of me to ask in the first place. You've done so much for me throughout my life, why would I ask you to throw yours away? Well, I don't think you will be throwing your life away, if it's any consolation. I think you are destined for something great. I think you will save this world, Rekthos. Thank you. I, uh, your words always, uh, seem to calm the mind. <laughs> I do my best. He like stretches and like you hear just so many cracks and pops and, and, and other sounds that are beyond your understanding. <laughs> I, I will uh, crack and pop in kind. <laughs> <laughs> Communicating. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you see these two men on the top of this, this temple or whatever and just you just hear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like lots of groans. And <laughs> <laughs> Small children in the street below run in fear. Um... <laughs> Daddy, what are they doing up there? I think they're breaking. <laughs> Hold on, let me just let me just move this way a little bit. <laughs> just do some quick yoga. Um, when he's done, he asks, "So, what is your next? What is your plan? What is next for you?" Is it just venturing back outside the walls, trying to find something? I mean, honestly, it kind of feels like I don't really have much of a choice at this point. If I'm to be part of the liberation of this world, who am I to say no to that? Well, I wish you luck, even though I know you will not need it. He smiles and you can see like a bunch of his teeth missing, but, um, but he says, and now if you'll excuse me, I, uh, hmm. I need to meditate. I have pondering to do. For if we even, if we save this world from the mist, what will be next? That will, that is the biggest question of all, I think. Well, based on the way that I thought this conversation was going to end, uh, thank you for really bringing it down with the existential dread. <laughs> really, really appreciate that. Anytime, he laughs. 
I guess at that point, I will just kind of bow to him and start on my way out the door. And then as I'm leaving, I will yell out to him, Uh, thank you so much for not bringing up the robe. And then I close the door and leave. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you step out into Garden Town, which is a portion of Clearlight that is almost completely covered in greenery. This is where they grow most of the food uh, that is eaten inside the walls or the food that doesn't need to be grown. Uh, there are uh, people who go out fishing over the massive lake outside Clear Lake, but that is so dangerous for the people going outside, so it's very expensive. So a lot of people just eat whatever can be grown uh, within the walls in this section of the city. It is more brightly lit. The city itself, the whole city is brightly lit because of the crystals, you know, keeping the, the monsters outside. But in this section, the crystals are pointed inward to foster the growth of the plant life. Because basically this place and the dockyards and the mushroom farms underground are all that are keeping this place alive. Uh, so when you, as you wander through, you can just, be, you are surrounded by greenery and even the, the, the buildings are covered in creeping vines and even some of them are growing like crops and, and fruits and vegetables inside the city. It's like, have you ever seen those skyscrapers that are farms? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I don't know if that's actually a real thing or if it was just like a concept that I saw, but um, yeah, they've got different floors covered in the crystals pointed at them so that they can ha get the sunlight that they need. So because there isn't a lot of lateral space, they've been forced to grow upward. That is where you are. Uh, where are you headed? Oh, you know, what? that's a good question. We didn't really set up a like, hey, this is where we should meet up afterwards, huh? No, you do know that you can uh, pretty reliably meet with Melira, and she can get a message out to everyone. You know where she has been living, and she can send you guys messages whenever. That's fair. I think for now, I'm just going to just kind of wander around in the area that I am in now. The greenery is very calming, because as, as mentioned, I have a lot going through my brain at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to just gonna waltz around, but maybe do a couple laps in the, the green ward. Or the green ward. And uh, every so often, I will stop at a particularly lush section of either wall or, you know, just a, just like a, a place where greenery is, in fact, is, a, is abound and, and thriving. And I will just place my hand on the spot and cast Druid Craft, and I am going to uh, just randomly, but also in some strange way, strategically placing little Versace symbols around <laughs> the entire area. <laughs> Versace symbols? Yeah, to match my chair. Right, right, gotcha. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so did I until literally just now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why it came back, but it came back. <laughs> Amazing. So yes, you go for a walk around uh, Garden Town. That's it, Garden Town. That's what I meant to say, not Green Ward and, and Garden Ward, whatever the hell I said. I mean, it's called those other things sometimes. Garden Town is just sort of like only when Greg those can't remember the name of it. <laughs> it's the most commonly used name. Uh, is Garden Town. Now, I would like to jump to Seuss real quick. Seuss, what have you been doing since you found out that your tunnel is breathing? Uh, well, after getting a that's such an odd sound yeah. word way to say yeah. that. Hold on, <laughs> I know what I said. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. That's another shirt idea. <laughs> <laughs> What was it again? <laughs> your tunnel is breathing. That's it. Thank you. What do you do when you find out your tunnel is breathing? That's it. What do you do? <laughs> Got it. All right. Question of the day. <laughs> Got it. Uh, it's and it is, it is somewhat disturbing because this is like where you go for peace, quiet, and solitude. And now it's like, it feels like your home is being invaded a little bit. Yeah. He'll go home and get some rest, which his home is just back alley but he will go rest in the back alley surrounded by a few like mostly melted candles yeah just whatever odds and ends seuss has collected he'll meditate for a little bit probably a good hour and then after that he's going to head to i guess like a general store to acquire some sort of lighting and some rope now by lighting you can get like a lantern is that what you're thinking Thinking something more like a flare. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's something you can buy. If uh, those exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. That that's something that you can definitely. They are they are commonly used to like send like you know important signals. Like, it's it's a lot of the time used as like an emergency like call for help kind of thing. 
-hmm. within the city. The uh, authorities use it to send messages to each other over long distances uh, when they don't have access to like the magic ways of sending messages. But yeah, you can get one of those for private use and it wouldn't even be particularly expensive. You can probably get like a flare for like one gold. Yeah, he's probably going to get about five of them sure. and a couple things of rope. So he has backup. Easily done. And then after that, he is going to head back into the tunnel and figure out why his tunnel is breathing. All right, then. Because when, when you discover your tunnel is breathing, you go into it with dungeon nearing equipment <laughs> and fire. <Perfect>. Exactly. <laughs> and fire. <laughs> Burn it all down. <laughs> so you make your way back into the dark tunnel that is called the subway, whatever that means. And you make it back to where the cave-in is. And you can see the hunk of metal of the ancient machine sticking out from the rubble of the cave-in. And it's very quiet. So you can only hear it if you, like, sit perfectly still and listen for it. But you can still hear the faint sound of slow breaths, like... <sighs> and it's so quiet that it's it's easy to you start to think that it might be your imagination, but you, you know it's there. Does it... If I, like, put my ear up to the machine, does it sound like it's coming from that? It sounds more like it's coming from behind the rubble. Okay. Is the rubble something somebody could realistically try and, like, move out of the way? It's possible, but it would take... You You doing it by yourself would take a very, very long time. This is, like, kind of like a job for, like, a team of people with, like, excavation equipment and stuff if you want it to get done in a more reasonable time. You've never really tried to, like, fully dig it out, so you don't know how far back it goes. Uh, but there's a lot of, like, heavy uh, chunks of concrete so you could do it. It would just take you a very, very long time. And I mean, you have a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seuss will just call out and say, is anybody there? Nothing but the sound of your voice echoing back at you in this tunnel. I will light one of the flares and kind of stick it into the rubble so it's secured but poking out. Mm -hmm. Guess I will head back outside and try and find everybody else. All right. There's not much I can do with my limited magical abilities here. Mm -hmm. Sweet. You know the best way for you to con get in contact with everybody else is to go to Malera, mm -hmm. and then she can contact everybody. I'm not going to tell her why. I'm just going to tell her that I need to get in touch with everybody else. All right. So when you like go to see her, she, she, she's still dressed in all white, and you're starting to like think she all, all of her clothing is just all white. Like You've never seen her wear a color. But yeah, she's happy to contact the rest of the gang for you. So while you all are doing these things, like while Greg those while you're wandering around Garden Town and, and taking in the sights, and while the two of you, uh, Emmy and Rissa, are headed towards Foyas' place, you get a message from Malira saying that Zeus wants to see you. And Malira says to you, Zeus, now this ain't something for, I told, I told y'all to like take some time off so that you can rest and make sure you don't I don't know, get corrupted by the mist or whatever. So this ain't, whatever the business you're doing ain't part of going back outside, is it? No, it's just for catching up and hanging around like uh, the young folk these days say. <laughs> oh my God. So uh, <laughs> Wow. I would like to emphasize that I respond to Malira with, Emmy and I are visiting a friend first, then we'll be there. All right. Take your time. So Malira's right eyebrow shoots up to the sky as you say that, Zeus. And but she's like, "Well, all right then. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've let them know. Uh, Emmy and Rissa apparently on their way to meet a friend, but uh, they said that they can come meet you afterwards. Okay. So uh, you're welcome to hang around here for a while until they arrive. Uh, help yourselves. I believe uh, I can. I can have uh, Simon get some food for you if you're hungry." That won't be necessary. She will just find a uh, chair or something nearby and just start meditating on the chair while he waits. You sit on one of those like soft benches and that she has in the foyer of her complex that she's purchased up high in the city. And she's just like, all right, well, uh, let me know if you need anything. I can uh, have anything you need brought to you. 
she like is very clearly just like doesn't know what to do with you. Um, I'm not even responding at that point. <laughs> she's like, I will be in my office. I'll talk to you later. She walks backward out of the room. <laughs> she will be meditating on some way to try and figure out what this voice is or how to get in contact with it or or the the breathing. Oh, because <laughs> it's, it's well beyond his capabilities. So he's just trying to figure out what to do at this point. Okay, so you spend some time like thinking about it and you, in your meditation, you sort of think like, if I can uncover this ancient machine, it appears to have been made for traveling long distances. So maybe whatever this thing is, is no matter how far back it is, we can perhaps use this machine if necessary, but we will need the help of somebody who understands the ancient machines and probably an artificer. Probably. But uh, Rissy, uh, pff, Rissy, <laughs> combined, you're, you are one entity now. Um, <laughs> Rissy like and Rissy. Emmy. I think it's really cute, actually. <laughs> it's our ship name. <laughs> Even though that's not ever going to happen. <laughs> Oh, I like Remy better, but anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> the two of you make your way over to the hospital, and it is large, and, well, I mean, it's all a part of the towers, so it's not, like, looming over any of the other buildings or anything, but you have to go a little ways up in one of the elevators, and it is sparkling clean it's got all the latest in like the magical and technological advances in medicine and you can't help but feel a little envious of like how fancy this place is compared to the uh, laboratory where you work i do as soon as i see how nice it is i pull out the wand of prestidigitation and clean us both up just in case <laughs> all right <laughs> and i use disguise self to look exactly the same but my clothes look a little nicer <laughs> sure Pretty easily done. So you two walk in smelling like money, and uh, <laughs> what are you doing? Are you just like asking the uh, people at the front desk if you can speak with Dr. Foyas? I wouldn't really know the protocol for a hospital. Yeah, I would probably go up to the front desk and show whatever badge I have. I'm sure I would have brought that from my. Mm -hmm. Area. That would identify you as a doctor, but it does yeah. not necessarily get you in here. But it like at least means that like hey, they know that you're a medical professional and are not just some weirdo coming to bother people. Um. Even though I just thought about it, I'm probably walking into this place with my like you know full-on skull tattoo and then my bone spine <laughs> jacket that I have on right now. So yeah. I probably don't you look do. like the most comforting. <laughs> a lot of people have very strange looks. Clear light fashion is absolute madness to the point where like, you know, there's people who walk around with like cheetah print skin and um, <laughs> people just kind of do whatever they want when it comes to like their appearance because it's a place full of magic and wonder and craziness. And in order to stand out in a place where you're so cramped up against a million other people. You gotta make yourself look like there's people, like on your way here, you saw a guy with a hat that was on fire. Um, <laughs> nice, I want one. <laughs> so you do look a little out of the ordinary. The bone spine is probably the strangest part. Um, like the spine like sewn into your jacket is probably the strangest part of it. So you basically just look like a goth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in comparison to the, the rest of the people. Um, so yes, when you make it to the front desk and ask uh, about seeing Dr. Foyas, the person tells you, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Foyas has not been in for quite some time. Do you happen to know where he is? I have dire question to ask about my research and I really need to see him. Unfortunately, no, I do not. He's actually, it's becoming a little bit of a concern around here where, uh, he hasn't been into work for weeks, actually. So, I mean, if you happen to come across the doctor, perhaps you can tell him that uh, we are uh, looking for him. Do you have any contact information or possibly know where he lives? Is that, is that on file somewhere? It is. Unfortunately, I am not at liberty to just give out his personal information, 
without his consent, and since I unfortunately do not know where he is to contact him, I cannot give you that information. But please do let him know if you see him that we are uh, concerned for his uh, well-being because we have not seen him for weeks and people are starting to get uh, nervous. Hmm. I'm just going to lean over a little bit and go, we are just concerned citizens and he's a good friend of mine and I just, I know he's super secretive, but I'm really worried about him and I just want to go and check in on him and make sure that he's okay. And this will and this will clear all of our consciences. Maybe he's lying unconscious on the floor right now in his home. As I try to persuade her to give me the fucking address. Yeah. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check. Or deception, because you are lying about being a good friend of his. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm an amazing <laughs> friend. You met him once. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we are the best of friends. I got a 17 for deception. Uh, okay, 17. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, he has uh, concerned uh, friends looking for him, but unfortunately I, I cannot, I'm legally prohibited from giving you his personal information uh, without some sort of official reasoning for it. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sorry I cannot help you further. Uh, Rizzo, you're like, oh, I'm gonna have to use magic or some shit to get this. <laughs> okay. Do I... I'm going to say, uh... Or pull Rissa... Oh, sorry. Pull Rissa. I'm just, I'm gonna... Pull yourself. <laughs> pull yourself aside. I didn't talk to you. <laughs> I'll just go, thank you for your time, I guess. And then I'll pull Emmy aside and go, do you know where the records are kept for all your all the employees? Do I? <laughs> I mean, you know where it's kept in your uh, laboratory, uh, in your research facility uh, for medicine. Uh, you're not sure where it would be in this hospital necessarily, but I mean, do you feel if you feel like you could probably figure it out based on like your knowledge of how these kinds of places work? I mean, I have a general idea if this is any layout uh, similar to mine, but I don't know this exact hospital. I've only been here a couple of times. But we can look for it if you want, but it might be difficult. I have an idea. And I'm saying this far away from the person so they don't hear me. It's not like I'm right in front of the counter still right now. being like, oh, hey, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I figured you had backed away uh, so that they couldn't hear this conversation. What if I disguise myself as someone who would have access to that room and just walk in and find him? Does your disguise self give you the proper credentials, too? makes me look like I have proper credentials. <laughs> yeah, but they're very bureaucratic in these hospitals, so they might ask for some kind of ID, so we do need to find some sort of ID for you in order to get you, so maybe I mean, I normally don't condone violence, but after what we've been through in the past uh, couple of weeks, I have a little bit more, I, I, I sway a little bit more towards it, so if you want to we can maybe see if we can get one of these doctors alone and maybe disguise you as one of them. Maybe I don't even have to use violence. Maybe I could just be really, really nice and flirtatious with them. <sighs> she makes a grit at that. And then just steal it. Or or violence. Or violence. Which I could we can use violence as a uh, plan B. We could try that first. <laughs> so are we gonna pull off ice? <laughs> <laughs> I want to. <laughs> Do you see any doctors particularly that you know that are gullible or know any doctor? Can I do like a certain check for that? <laughs> Let's see. This is a role to determine if anyone around here is somebody that you know. Yeah. So. Like, have I seen anybody at the Christmas party or <laughs> have I seen <laughs> that they are easy to flirt with or <laughs> I probably have flirted with myself? <laughs> I'm going to say do another flat charisma roll to see if you how well you know these people. You don't see like a ton of people because you are kind of like just in the front office. Uh, that one wasn't as good. That's a 13. A 13. Okay. You see exactly one person that you recognize in this area. It is a, a middle-aged human woman 
who is probably not susceptible to the flirtatious side of things. She is sort of known for being surly and not particularly friendly, especially with strangers, but it's somebody you know, at least. All right, I'll point her out and be like, that's the only girl I know. Um, I wouldn't try flirting with her, though. She might not take kindly to you. But I mean, you're pretty persuasive sometimes, so if anybody could break her, probably could be you. I've tried, but never could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so how far away is she from us? Um, she is writing on a clipboard at a desk on the other side of, uh, like at, in front of a desk that leads into a different hallway. So like probably like 40 feet away from you. Is she far enough away from the receptionist that the receptionist wouldn't notice if I talked to her? The receptionist does seem pretty distracted, so as long as you don't make, like, a ruckus or anything, like, if you try to tackle her and, like, take her out no, no, no. here in the lobby, I'm gonna be then you'll probably be noticed. But, um, like, if you just go over and talk, the receptionist probably won't even notice. Cool. I'm going to walk up behind her, and before I even reach her, I'm going to use my ability to subtract D8 on a saving throw for this lady. Okay. And roll the five. And I need Dope. her to make a wisdom saving throw minus five. Okay, then. I was not expecting a hospital heist this episode. <laughs> so she rolled pretty well, but uh, with a minus five, uh, she's going to fail. Yes. Because your DC is what, 15? Yes. What was it again? It's yeah, so she failed. Yes. Rolled a 16, but with that subtraction, you got her. Nice. What was the lady's name again? Oh, I didn't tell oh, you. Uh, her no. her name is Garia. Garia mm -hmm. Malfoon. Sorry, I, I should be respectful. Dr. Garia Malfoon. <laughs> well, I, I assume doctor and put doctor in my notes. <laughs> so I just cast Charm Monster on her. Oh, dear. <laughs> so she is my friend for the next hour. So we have an hour. Okay. So uh, you walk up to her, like, just sort of tap her on the shoulder, and she turns around to look at you is like, uh, can I help you? And the, you just, like, sort of, like, wave your fingers in front of her face, and she's just like, oh, oh, my good friend. And one thing I would have done previously is I would have told Emmy to wait behind ba or stay back so she, Emmy's not recognized, and I would have cast this guy self on myself to look completely different. Okay. So I, I would do that prior to, I should have said it prior. My bad. That's fine. But um, so sh I walk up and go, oh, hi, Dr. Malfoon. I am so glad I ran into you. Um, I really needed to grab something for the doctor out of the um, out of the records. He, he really wanted me to check in, in his chart and make sure that uh, everything, his, uh, his address was updated. And I cannot get in there for some reason. And he's really, really mad at me. Oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that, darling. I can help you with that. I'm... I'm, I can't believe this. I've forgotten my best friend's name. How silly of me. Uh, <laughs> wow, I am really embarrassed. It's, I'm it's Laura. Remember? Laura. Right, yeah. right. So sorry. I must we, be. We got tired really close today. while we were. You were really tired. We had drinks. It was great. We had so much fun. Right, right. You know, it's all coming back to me now. Yes, right, right. And oh, you told me all about your ex husband. You know, it's. We'll, we'll talk more about that later, but uh, you said you needed me to get you something from the yeah, can, records? I, can you just, can you just, I just need to get like one file really quick. Otherwise, you know how, how some of the other doctors are. They're really, really mad and I, I don't want to lose my job. Right, right. After I losing understand. my ex-husband. And, you know, after <sighs> a lot of the people around here can be assholes. And it, you know what? Honestly, including me, but no. you know. Just today, I'm just feeling really good today for some reason. And I'm just, I feel like I need to like <laughs> sort of make up for all the, <sighs> mm -hmm. I, I, I can, now that I'm thinking about sort of my, some of my behavior, I feel like I've been kind of rude to people, so. Well, I mean, <sighs> I'm sure they deserved it. You know, some of them, I'm sure. You're like the sweet, you're the sweetest person. Uh, you know, it means so much to me that you say that. Um, here, I will be happy, be happy to take you back to the records room. <laughs> okay. Real quick, I, I feel the need to point out that we've been doing this for what? This is like 16 episodes or something like that now. 17, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That character was just introduced like not even 20 seconds ago, and it's already had more to character development than any of us have. In the <laughs> I don't, I've had a lot of characters. <laughs> <laughs> 
to the records hall. Dr. Malfoon leads you back through some of the hallways, just holds up an ID badge as she walks by the um, the receptionist and says, uh, uh, this is Laura, she's with me. And uh, you keep, you, and just receptionist just sort of waves at you and you make your way through some of the hallways, zigzagging through this place. You are, tr- you know, you are trying very hard to remember how to get back out of here just in case. Um, <laughs> And you make your way to a storage room that's stacked high with shelves and shelves full of boxes, just full of paper files, and uh, also a few magical uh, storage devices as well. And you are able to uh, get a hold of Dr. Foyas's yes. personal records. I will take the one page that has his address on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab another folder and just put that paper in it so it looks like I actually grabbed a folder that I needed and go, oh my god, you are the... You're such a lifesaver. Oh, it's no trouble at all. You know, I, you know, actually, you know what? How about you pay me back? We'll go get drinks later tonight. How about that? Yes, you just tell me how you feel after work. If you don't feel like it after work, I completely understand because she's going to be real mad in about an hour. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I really appreciate it. I, I have to go give this to the doctor though, so thanks. So it's like, how do, what's the fastest way back? I got this, I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what, just for fun, roll an intelligence check for me. We'll make it investigation. DC's yeah. relatively low, but. I rolled a 19 on the die, so. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, so you do remember how to make your way back out of here, although it was a, a few twists and turns. And Emmy, you see the woman that Rissa turned into come out holding a, uh, a file folder. While she was gone, he act- you see Emmy kind of like leaning up against a wall, talking to this like very pretty half-elven male nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to like, you know, you see that he's like obviously flirting with him. <laughs> you know what? I would love for you to roll a persuasion check to see how well that's going. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> That's an eight. <laughs> oh, good. He's this is exactly very, what very I wanted. <laughs> Rissa, as you approach, you can see like there's just like a handsome nurse talking to Emmy. And the nurse is doing that body language thing where like his body is turned away from Emmy and like just like every few seconds like starts to make the move to like walk away. <laughs> like it's like, oh, I mean, yeah, that's so, so cool. It's so great. I mean, it's very fascinating, but I, I, I just, I just, I have to, I have so much work to do. I've got patience. <laughs> I'm going to walk up behind him and be like, Emmy, dear, like, it's, yeah, it's time to go. Please let the poor man work. <laughs> and he kind of like looks over like at Rissa and he's just like, uh, um, and he looks over at the nurse as he's walking away probably be like, drinks <laughs> later. Uh, you can. No, dear, dear, no, uh, no. Uh, the nurse pretends not to hear, and uh, <laughs> you, that's the last time you ever see that person. Uh, <laughs> no character Maybe. development for that one. <laughs> Damn it. Emmy can't No get... arc. <laughs> Emmy can only get laid in his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and we walk outside, and I will remove my disguise self oh, when nobody can see me. Probably not in a, in a super public place. You, like, go no. to a restroom and turn back into Rissa. Um. Yes, 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 yes. I'm like, I got an address. Beautiful. So. Somebody got what they were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> he goes under his breath a little bit. <laughs> 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 Dr. Malfoon is going to be real pissed in about an hour. Well, 55 minutes at Laura. <laughs> That's a that's a regular for her anyway. I don't think I've ever seen her happy. Yeah, so we should go. Yeah, so you uh, make your way away from that place, and probably you're thinking head to uh, see what Seuss wants, right? Yeah, I guess we can go. Oh uh, well, that's that's entirely up to you. You could also just immediately go to uh, Foyce's house or apartment, I should say. Should we go get the others and then possibly go to Doctor Foyce's? See what Seuss wants. I mean, we may need backup. If this seems kind of weird that he's just like not showing up to work and. It's because he's outside of the walls. Yeah, but you said he was here recently and yet he hasn't come to work. So something must be going on where he apparently has something more important than just, I mean, he seemed to be pretty adamant about his job. So if there's something keeping him from it, that must be important. And I don't really trust that group very much from the interaction we had with them. All right, let's go get Seuss and Greg this then at Malira's and not have the party split anymore. And on the way, I also, like, I realized I 
totally made this absolute revelation about this whole warlock thing. So <laughs> I'm probably going to tell Rizza about everything that I found while we're walking to meet up with Zeus. <laughs> And you tell her all the details on the way, and most of it, Rissa, you like barely understand. Um, Everything is warlock. <laughs> talking about like the shape of the arcane threads holding, like connecting the weave to these objects that Emmy was analyzing, and like how they indicate that there's a connection to a uh, being from another world. It's all very complex and very magicy, and um... <laughs> she's just doing that nod thing where she's like, oh, mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> I, that makes sense. Greg, though, so you would arrive at Malira's place before the other two because you weren't delaying. Indeed. So you come walk into uh, Malira's foyer and see uh, Seuss, like, sort of meditating on a bench, uh, one of those cushioned benches. All right, cool. So I'm assuming he hasn't noticed me as of yet, seeing as how he is meditating. What is your passive perception, Seuss? 12. You know, with a 12, yeah, you might be able to get in there without him noticing. Even if I do notice him, I'm not going to say anything because I'm meditating, so... <laughs> Fair enough. So what is the, the general layout of this foyer? Is it just like a big open room? It's a long rectangular room. There is a a desk off to one side of the door leading into the rest of the place. And But this place is decked out in like shiny things. This place is like mostly gold in its decor. And you like touch things and it does seem to be real gold, just like on like the pillars in here. Uh, but it's a relatively open room with seating along the edges of the room. Sort of like a waiting room almost. Although she has never actually used it as such as far as you've seen. Or you've okay. always been just ushered through here into the next area. All right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to I'm gonna walk in, look over, and I will see Seuss meditating on a chair and just kind of think to myself for a moment, I haven't tried that out yet. <laughs> then I'm going to just kind of close my eyes and think for a moment. And then I'm going to open my eyes and point uh, and throw my hand forward looking at Seuss. And I am going to cast Conjure Animals. Uh, okay. And the way I'm deciding to do this, it's going to be a randomized creature <laughs> that I am rolling for, because I find that it's more fun this way than to just do what it says on the thing. Okay. So. What's happening? Basically, I'll, I'll explain it. So I summon a series of fey spirits that take form of beasts that appear in unoccupied spaces that I can see within range. Choose one of the following options. It's either one beast of a challenge rating of two or lower, two beasts of four or lower, or sorry, two beasts of one or lower, four beasts of one and a half or lower, or eight beasts of a quarter or lower. Uh, and they have like a list of all the different ones you could get. So I am I have it set up on a rolling system where it, it'll just pick one randomly instead of me being like, I want this one. Okay. So here we go. So, all right. And then I roll that in response. God, I hope this is exactly what I wanted. And it is. Awesome. <laughs> it's exactly the one I wanted. So... I throw my hand forward, and all around Seuss, four reef sharks spawn. <laughs> what? So, okay, just a bunch of sharks just appear all around you, Seuss, slightly wet, flopping on the ground, teeth gnashing, gills, whatever, doing gilling. whatever it is that gills. They're gilling, gills for so sure. <laughs> And so that happens. Um, <laughs> Not really sure what to do about it or with it, but it happens. <laughs> <laughs> that certainly is a thing that occurred. Zeus is going to try his best to meditate through it. <laughs> <laughs> Without even giving like any sort of emotion as to how he feels about this. A shark tail slaps you across the back of the head. <laughs> And it is impossible to meditate surrounded by sharks on land. <laughs> yeah, well, I really didn't think this through very well. I was hoping since they were fey creatures that they'd be like flying around Seuss's head. <laughs> no, they're legit like whatever creature <laughs> that, oh. that, that they think as they are. Yeah, they are fey spirits, but they do take the form. Also, by the way, they can't breathe currently. <laughs> yeah, they are currently yeah. dying. They are currently dying. After it smacks him across the face, he's just going to open his eyes and then just like in a swift motion, he's going to pull out a sword and just try and kill all of them. <laughs> um, it's not hard to do. All right. Actually, um, they, they have some pretty high armor class, I got to tell you. <laughs> 
true, but he does have advantage. Yeah, um, there is that. That, and they're already dying from, like, no air. <laughs> so they can get, like, one weak. attack in. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, Seuss, you are able to make relatively quick work of these four sharks flopping around on the ground. No real sharks were hurt in the recording of this podcast. And then Seuss is going to... That you know of. Um... <laughs> I'm sitting on my shark skin chair right now. Um, <laughs> I do not have a shark skin chair. <laughs> that would hurt. He's going to look at Greg this and just be like, I appreciate it if you didn't waste life like this. <laughs> life? What do you mean? These sharks are were created and then immediately doomed to die. Well, I mean, they came into contact with you, so. <laughs> that is fair, but... It was unnecessary. I now this is something to, that I'm wondering when they see when they die, do they just disappear because they're like not actual, or is there just a bloody mess everywhere? <laughs> you know, that's a very good question. Let me let me see what it says <laughs> if it specifies. I think they just go back to the the Fey like where they came from. I think they just kind of poof out of existence. <laughs> yeah, it just says it disappears. Yeah, I don't think they die. The <laughs> as soon as you kill them, they all just like. <laughs> Okay, then he will not exactly. say that because he kind of thinks they're just fake. <laughs> See? That's the sound of the four sharks being killed. What What was that about life? <laughs> it, it puffed out of existence, much like Greg does. Riss is <laughs> miles away, rubbing her temples because something bad's happening. Yeah, Greg <laughs> is doing something weird. <laughs> <laughs> we can sense it. <laughs> My... My Greg this is thing. <laughs> Malira at that point comes into the room having been alerted that someone has entered her headquarters. Just like, ah, Greg Thos, you're here. Seems like uh, Seuss wanted to, uh, she like looks at him and her eyebrow shoots up again. Seuss will put his sword back in the sheath. Hang out again <laughs> with ya? Yeah, it's been so long. We're here to chill. Chill. Right. I haven't seen you in like a day. Well, Malira says, speaking of chilling, I was thinking uh, we've got a bit of a problem with, you know, public relations here. Uh, and people don't really believe in our mission. So I was thinking what better way to get the nobles on our side than to have uh, a, a banquet or a, a cocktail party or whatever. One of them uh, featuring y'all so that people can see that y'all are capable trustworthy warriors out to do good in the world. Are That's we? my plan. <laughs> uh, I'm not really one for public appearances. I mean, Rissa can bullshit her way through it, but everybody else probably would have a problem. If you're looking to uh, air, to air a, uh, a look of... Confidence? That's that's the word, thank you. Are we there, Thank you, the Rissa, who's not there. Not yet. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was gonna say <laughs> an air of confidence and doability. I don't think I would be the the prime candidate. I don't know why I switched accents all of a sudden. Nonsense, nonsense. Listen, I don't think he would be a prime candidate either, or uh, would I? Listen, listen. Y'all have gone outside. The things that you've told me, uh, assuming they're true, uh, are absolute madness. And you, so you are absolutely capable fighters and warriors and, and, and murderers of all kinds. You can absolutely make these people believe that you are powerful warriors. I believe it. When, when you introduce us at the banquet or whatever, be sure to leave off murderers. <laughs> Right. <laughs> of course. Uh, my mind's made up. I'm uh, going to have it done. Simon, and Simon is just behind her, and you're like, how long has he been standing there? Now I've got him and this freaking thing around my neck doing this <laughs> shit to me. <laughs> it's like, you don't, you didn't see him come in. There's not a puff of smoke. It's not like a, there's not the sound of teleportation magic or anything like that. He's just always been there and you, do, you, or at least that's what it seems like. You can't tell if he's always been there or if he just appeared. There's something going on with him. Anyway. Wait, there's a way to test this. Simon. Uh, yes, sir. I, I'm pointing over at Seuss and uh, talking to Simon. I go, what did he just kill? Uh, I, I believe... Sir Gregthos uh, summoned some sharks, it looked like. And... He's been here the entire time. <laughs> Damn, this guy's good. <laughs> he just has that thing, that one ability where if you, they stand still, nobody can see them. Yeah, it's called the Drax effect. <laughs> yeah, the Drax effect. Yeah. <laughs> He's Kuroko. 
<laughs> and she says, Simon, make it happen. I want invites made for a, let's call it a cocktail party. The noblemen love that shit. Is Ethan Hawke gonna be invited? Oh wait, I'm not there. Never mind. <laughs> she shall hold out his arm. Just be like, he should. Can we arrive at this point? <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, she says, I want invites made up for this cocktail party, and I want there to. You, you know what? You know what? You and I are gonna have a conversation. Follow me. And so she leaves. And but, but before she goes, she like turns around, and is like. Y'all sure you don't want to come in and, you know, make yourselves comfortable, get something to eat? At least sit in the observation room where you can get a good view of the... I'll just look at Greg Thos and be like, see what he wants to do. I think we're good out here, just catching up. It's been chilling. St- so long, right. so chilling. long. Chilling, exactly. Chilling. Sure <laughs> thing. Uh, just know that uh, in approximately, let's say, three days from now, uh, make it, say, six o'clock. Cocktail party. Be prepared. Get something nice to wear. You can wear your armor because we do want you to look like powerful warriors. But make it look nice. You know what I mean. I swear to God, if my family is on that list, this is gonna be real mad. <laughs> they weren't until just now. Yeah. When you made it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, about I'm gonna say eventually, uh, Rissa and Emmy arrive to about see. Eventually. Right. If, <laughs> if, if you don't mind. I was gonna say an amount of time, but I was like, I have no idea how long it takes to get around this goddamn city. It's a long time. If if you don't mind, real quick before they show up, mm-hmm. after Malira and Simon leave the room, I will look over at uh, Seuss and just kind of give him like a look, and then go round two and throw my hand out in front of me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. <laughs> And let's see here. So that's that. All right. At this point, Seuss is getting ready. Like, <laughs> it's a prepared duel, and he has <laughs> got his hand on his the hilt of his sword. He's ready to go. All right. This time, as soon as it appears, he's going to destroy it, whatever it is, before he even knows what it is. I was going to say, but it's going to be like that, that thing where like where someone goes, pull, and then like you see like yeah. this animal fly by. Or, or yeah. skeet, skeet shooting with animals. <laughs> uh, this time, a... Hold on, how big is this creature? I have to double check this, because that seems like it might be pretty big. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you just see it fall from the sky. <laughs> I'm gonna close the blinds so I don't get assassinated by PETA for this yeah. episode. Yeah, that might be a good call. He's gonna write an say. article about our episode. Okay, it's not nearly <laughs> as big as I thought. It's still pretty big though. So a plesiosaur. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> an, entire di- not big. It's an entire dinosaur appears in this place. <laughs> it's a large creature, so it's not like a, a, an ancient dragon or something like that. It's it's big. Don't get it's, me wrong, it's big, but it's not insanely massive. It's not going to destroy the foyer when it spawns in. It might destroy Zeus just by falling on him. Maybe. I mean, we'll find out, won't we? Oh, no. <laughs> I got oh. access to third level spells, guys. <laughs> and use them all <laughs> in it's, the room. That we're oh, God. As soon Dying. as the plesiosaur appears and looks like it's settled and it's settled. <laughs> yeah, it like scooches a little bit on the carpet. It's like when you get a new fish for your fish tank and you leave it in the bag at the top for a couple minutes beforehand to make sure it acclimates to the water and doesn't die of shock. Yeah, yeah that's, that's when my fish right died. Now. I didn't know you were supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure the creature is like, understands where it's at and isn't confused and ready to go. And then as soon as it is, I'm going to try and cut it down. I, I love um, how he, yeah. he switched immediately from... I don't care what it is, I'm going to kill it as soon as it shows up to, oh wait, this is a creature, let's let it figure itself out for a second, then I'm going to kill it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. I don't want to spend the next 20 minutes doing initiative rolls and like attack (laughs) actions for this plesiosaur and Seuss. So... (laughs) We uh, will say it it went off. Drakthos, are you commanding it to attack Seuss? That's the question. (laughs) Because it follows your commands. It does follow my commands. I don't know. If Seuss is going to attack it, I mean, it's going to hit. It's going to swing back. All yeah, right. Seuss will just look at Greg this and nod. All right. Uh, so, Seuss, uh, you, this is certainly larger than you were expecting, uh, but it is another sea creature. <laughs> so 
This one can breathe above water. This one can breathe, yes, but it's not very fast. I don't know the exact stats of a plesiosaur, but it doesn't have a lot of mobility on land. Um, it's not bad. Uh, so it you it spends it tries to bite you a couple of times. You you jump back and forth, dodging its attacks. Uh, you m- manage to make several cuts along its side and. After an epic conflict between man and beast, you are able to decapitate this creature uh, across its long neck, and it falls before your blade, and then <laughs> it disappears in a puff of smoke. The head and the body <laughs> at different times. <laughs> Please tell me we walk in as this is happening. <laughs> yes, you two walk in just in time to see Zeus chop the head off of a plesiosaur in Malira's foyer. As Riss is finishing a sentence saying, I really hope they didn't get themselves in trouble. Oh, never mind. This <laughs> will look over at Greg and be like, much better choice this time. Yes, choice. That, <laughs> that's what that was. <laughs> oh, dear. If you get bored later, I do have a third one in me. <laughs> you wanted to talk to us. I also wanted to talk to you guys. So please go first. Oh, first we need to be somewhere, preferably away from here. Why, because Simon is listening at all times and everywhere? You knew he was here. I mean, isn't he always? Fair. That's probably fair. We look around. We don't see him. <laughs> I know you're here. <laughs> Simon, <laughs> say hi if you're in the room with me right now. Oh, we don't got a friggin' spirit box out, guys. It's okay. It doesn't appear to be here. <laughs> who we, no who response. We Ouija board? <laughs> no response. <laughs> Simon, say yes or no if you're here. <laughs> all right. Attack. There's... Is there like a tavern somewhere nearby? I mean, absolutely. Um, in this section of the city, it's pretty fancy places, actually. Let's go to a tavern. Uh, so you get yourselves in a, a table at a, we'll call it, it's, it's kind of, it has like speakeasy vibes, dimly lit. They have couches uh, with low tables rather than like booths with restaurant style furniture. And but they have, Wonderful cocktails, great drinks, a little bit overpriced, but it's a pretty nice place. Um, sort of like gray and gold decor, sort of like a, it's it's meant to be like a place where people just meet, chill out, relax, all that kind of stuff. So yes, you get yourselves a table at uh, at uh, that kind of place. Uh, what uh, are you doing? I ask for a lantern brew. Uh, that is very quickly brought to you. Fantastic. It just makes me happy that it's the, like- the, I'm going to roll to see if the uh, the person serving you recognizes you as a lanner. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> Thank goodness. Roll to one. Um, okay, so you have your fine drinks in front of you. Seuss, do you want to go first? Yeah, I was uh, meditating in my typical area below in the tunnels, and I think there's something down in there. I was able to hear some breathing, but there was nothing visible, at least to uh, my eyes. That's concerning. Also, uh, I believe there's a machine or something down there that might be a bit aid in ridding this mist. I gave Emmy the blueprints to it earlier, but I think we need to uh, explore that a little bit more. You want us to explore the tunnels? that have breathing yes but mostly the machine i believe we need this artifact or whatever they call it and i don't know how to make it work myself but i think there emmy might be able to have an idea of what it is are we um are we all aware that the the area that he likes to meditate and all that is called the subway oh we don't know where he sleeps that he, I don't think he's ever told us. Oh, fair enough. Okay, never mind. Emmy, you have taken a look at the thing that Zeus gave you, and it's like beyond your, this is not something you have studied or anything like that. So it's, it, you don't really get it. And you can see like certain like magical properties involved in its construction. You can see a few arcane runes, but it's like not your area of expertise. So you'd need like the help of an artificer. Artificer, perhaps. Like you've mentioned four times. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we keep not listening. Yeah. Keith, get Leah in here. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that kind of help. I've taken a look at the blueprints, but this isn't something I'm particularly familiar with. I mean, your best bet is to hopefully find someone a little bit more uh, inclined in the sense of mechanics that can help you with this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I could take a look at it, give you my medical opinion, but I don't know how much that'll do for you. Do we know what, what 
type of person that would be called? An artificer? <laughs> <laughs> you even have a one what? of them, uh, you were given a name to go seek them out <laughs> and an address. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we sh- we have this artificer person who uh, I think we need to go meet. And I'm pretty sure like people are yelling at us. It's artificer because I hear it said both ways. <laughs> and it's artificer. I pr- it's I, it's artificer. artificer. I I will fight anyone who pronounces yeah. it artificer. I, I, I second I second that. Yeah. <laughs> it's artificer. I, I will post my address <laughs> in the Discord channel for beholder to no one, and we will fight in my front yard. <laughs> That's artist fur, by the way. <laughs> artist fur. All right, Keith, I'm just coming over to your house and beating your ass now, then. Here we go. <laughs> Bring it. So after we have that discussion, I'll be like, we have, yeah, you said you ha- we have that address for that one guy. Why don't we just go speak to him and have, or them, and have them look at it? I don't, I don't remember. Uh, she, Malira said Ozzy Mackim, I believe, was the name she gave you, but I don't know. I think she did say that Ozzy was a she. Her. We go speak to her, and then we can get answers for that. However, one thing that was interesting. Do you remember the caped man or the cloaked man we met by the Titan? The people who told us not to follow them? Yeah, the leader. Was he the leader? He talks like the leader. Yes, and, and I know the people, but yeah, I remember them. I, I know who he is, and he was in my mother's home, speaking to my mother right before we got there. That's, and I have his address. That's strange. We pulled off a hospital heist. We did. I mean, Rissa did most of the work. One lady's going to be real mad in about It one probably minute. already happened. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right about she, now. And she, she just, like, pan over to her. She's like, Fuck! <laughs> 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 so you feel a disturbance in the force. <laughs> Someone's real mad at this Laura lady. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm down for meeting this guy and seeing why he was there. I mean, if he's visiting your family, clearly something seems a little fishy there. Well, some backstory. He was with my family like 18 years ago or something. And why suddenly would he come back the day or so after we've met? him in outside of the walls is my concern. I don't think that's much of a coincidence. Oh no, it's definitely not. Also, Emmy found something that uh, he was talking about for a very long time on our walk over here. Oh, as you find. I just start going on my (laughs) (laughs) my total tangent about it again, just hoping that maybe somebody will understand (laughs) what I'm talking about. Greg, though, so you're proficient in Arcana, so you at least understand, like, the basics. Uh, you don't understand a lot of, like, the medical side of things that Emmy's talking about. And I don't know if you've ever, like, actually used the machine that Emmy, he is talking about. Uh, no, probably not. But uh, you, at the very least, like, understand, like, ah, yes, the arcane threads that connect a warlock to its patron. Yes, yes, I understood some of those words, yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's very concerning. Because usually a warlock makes a connection to a patron via a contract done voluntarily. So like the trees outside made a contract with a patron? That's nonsense. Like the animals and trees and everything. I liked it better when magic just came from within. (laughs) From the sky. It's all just the power of friendship, just in different forms. (laughs) This is what this whole podcast is. It's just the power of friendship. We already used that title for an episode. Yeah, we can't. We 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 haven't tried that against the monsters outside. We we just have to go out and hug them. Not once has any of you given a monster a hug. And you know what? That's why the story is still going. Let's go give the one with the really long legs a hug. That seems like a good idea, right? Under oh, yeah, the... absolutely. Be sure to stand directly under his, under his <laughs> upper part while you're hugging that leg. Hug his belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, there have been plenty of creatures that have tried to give us hugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it didn't really work out for either party when that happened. So. The entire adventure is all just like dealing with where's my hug guy. Yeah. <laughs> all of this is. <laughs> Because Seuss got hugged by some acid. Uh-huh. Seuss uh-huh. got hugged by a fleshy, nasty... I got hugged by a lot of things. Just like a, a limb butthole. <laughs> <laughs> you all got eaten by a lot of things, too. I don't know if yeah, that counts as a I hug. I did. I did. <laughs> That's more enveloping than a hug. <laughs> it's a super you were hug. inside a creature's mouth, so... <laughs> That's a super hug. <laughs> but yeah, so the, all of that's very concerning information. <laughs> 
that Emmy has just told you. So we have a couple things we can do while we're on our vacation. Does that mean Emma Warlock? No, we're not connected, as far as I know. The thing's outside the wall. Wait, I need to study all of us. We gotta see if you're you connected You haven't looked to. at any of you guys, so like you haven't co- collected <laughs> a sample of like Rissa's blood or whatever to examine or anything like that. Everyone, give me your blood. <laughs> In the bar right now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it pulls no. out miles from his belt. Susan <laughs> no. a sword. No. I will reach out my arm for for Seuss to do whatever he's got to do. Um, I mean, I have IVs for this. <laughs> we could do it the clean way. <laughs> you don't have leeches? I promise it'll be a clean cut. I'm just going to put a gold or two on the table and get up. <laughs> <laughs> just see, like... Wait, I have a better idea. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a die here. I'm gonna throw my hand out in front of me. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! That's that. And please, once again, let this work out exactly like I wanted it to. That would be amazing. Yep. Cool. Sweet. So I throw my hand out in front of me, and eight quippers, I believe, is what they're called. Quippers. I don't oh, know what those fish. are. What is a Hold quipper? On. They are fish. Oh. More Why? fish. It's Why do you have so many creature. fish? They they look like little uh, they look like little piranha. <laughs> oh, oh, those no. look like the freaking fish from Summon a uh, Icewind Dale. Knuckle school crowd. of piranha in this bar. Hey, it's only eight of them, and they're all on the table that we're only sitting on. Only eight. So it's, yeah, it's only eight. Flopping <laughs> around. I figure we if if we don't want to use Seuss's sword to do the blood drawing, these guys can <laughs> can fit in. Seuss will just pick one up and attach it to his arm. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Rissa hands a fi- just hands five gold to the waiter. You pass your waiter on the way out, and he just like looks I'm so with like sorry. a thousand yard stare back at your table. I'm sorry, I'm not with them. And then I walk out. <laughs> so, Yo, Rissa, where are you going? Throw a quipper at her. <laughs> <laughs> you are very quickly kicked out of this bar. Um, <laughs> as the quippers over the next couple of minutes poof out of existence because they cannot <laughs> breathe. No, so he's just letting the one attached to his arm just stay there, though, until it goes away. Uh, you take uh, four piercing damage. Okay. Um, oh, there you go. I mean, now you can test his blood. I grab the, my two glasses of Merlot that I had, and I kind of just, like, hop off trying to, like, finish them, <laughs> trying to stay away from the quippers. <laughs> Picking up all my vials and be like, this is not how I wanted this to go. It's not how I wanted it to go either. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is um, what happens when I have access to dun- higher level magics, guys. This is Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. Well, thankfully, I think that was your last third level spell. That is my last third level spell currently. So yes. we're good for the next 24 hours. <laughs> yep. I will come back with a vengeance. I'll look over at Greg this and be like, do you only create fish? <laughs> you know, I uh, haven't really wrung out all the kinks yet? I don't know. <laughs> because these don't seem very useful in real life. Useful? No. Hilarious? Yeah, I think it's kind of leaning toward that direction. I mean, if you put all eight of those on a creature, though, that's eight times four. They do one one. damage, technically, <laughs> each. Technically. First off. <laughs> fight them to death. Slowly. I look at Emmy and I'm like, can we please go to the doctor's house? <laughs> Yes, let's continue. I'll try to throw my hand out in front of me again and just be like, aw. So you're going to Dr. Foyas' home? Yes. Okay. It takes a little while to find your way through the city, uh, making your way. You you have an address. You can make your way there. Um, But you come across a uh, relatively simple apartment in actually a tower. It's the same tower as the hospital, just a little bit higher up. And... So you make your way there, uh, and you come to a locked door. I knock on the door. No response. She's just going to go walk around and check out the other, if there's any other entrances or exits or windows or anything like that, see if you can see what's inside. There is not another entrance into the apartment from here. I mean, you could, there's almost certainly windows but you'd have to climb around the outside of the tower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not going to do that much. <laughs> hey, Greg, this. Could you turn into a tiny spider and crawl in the door and see if anybody's home? No, sadly, I think I used all my spells. That's not a spell. Out of character. Weird thingy. <laughs> wild shape. Yeah. That's your wild shape. You could do that. 
Hold on, I'm trying to think of a reason not to. <laughs> fine, I cast Polymorph on myself. All right, fine, you can do it then. And you turn into a spider? Yes, like a, the tiny spider to go underneath just so I can see what's going on. Uh, sure, so you uh, make your way in underneath the door. Even the spider has to squeeze a little bit to shimmy underneath the door. So you, it's dark in here. Uh, do spiders have dark vision? I don't know. They're evil, so probably. <laughs> evil. They can see everything. I don't know if that's a prerequisite. Spiders are <laughs> spiders are friends. They eat other. They eat yes. bad books. Yes. Yes, they have dark vision. Cool. So you uh, make your way through the. You come. It, it, it's it's a relatively small apartment, but it's very well furnished. He. Lo- it looks like one of those like super rich person penthouse uh, apartments so it's like not a lot of square footage but a lot of like really fancy like a floor to ceiling window on the opposite side of the uh, apartment so you make your way through uh, across the uh, the the tile floor of this place is Rissa looking for anything in particular I'm looking uh, for the doctor specifically but I want to basically see if he's home and he's ignoring us or if this is just a waste of time but I would also, I guess, look around to see if anything else is interesting. Mm-hmm. You spend a little time, like, wandering around the apartment searching for Doctor... Uh, the Doctor, sorry. <clears throat> you search for Doctor. Um, and you do find a, uh, a door with a light coming underneath it, but when you crawl underneath it, it looks like he just left a lamp on, and he's not here. You search all the rooms of the apartment, and it appears that the good Doctor, Foyas, is not here. Okay. But you, you are in his office now. Um, is there a window in his office? I will say yes. Oh, well, you said there's a, a floor-to-ceiling window. Didn't there's you? a floor-to-ceiling window in the living room. Okay. And how high are we? Like, around the first floor? Uh, you're on the first floor of his apartment, but of the tower, you are, like, really high up. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will cancel Polymorph. Shloop. You are Rissa once again. And I will look that around his office. <laughs> I was going to say, why does it make that noise every okay, time? Okay, <laughs> go ahead and make an investigation check for me, Rissa, to search for relevant information for you and your life. Dirty 20. Um, so, let's see. You search his desk, opening up the drawers, looking for papers, evidence of anything that you can find that would indicate where he's gone. One thing you notice is that there is a picture of a uh, woman about the same age as Foyas uh, on his desk, but it is like turned down, like facing down, like the picture frame is not standing up. So that's interesting. There is paperwork. One of the first things you find is paperwork for a funeral. And it seems that Dr. Foyas recently lost his wife. Oh, not recently. It was actually quite a few years ago, but there is still rec he still kept all the records of in fact there's a lot of like artifacts from his dead wife just scattered around like in his desk and he, he he's he very clearly like loved her very much and is not doing well as far as her no longer being here you also find something a little concerning you find a book like introduction it's not called this but it is an introductory book to necromancy to like learn how to do those kinds of spells, uh, which is not the kind of thing that a doctor or a cleric, I mean, doctors do tend to know a couple of necromancy spells, but they're very specialized. Um, Like this is the kind of necromancy that's like darker. Like I think like Revivify is a necromancy spell, but that is not- And like Toll the Dead and stuff like that. Yeah, there are a few necromancy spells that like doctors would know, but these are not those kinds. These are the, uh, pull the soul out of a person's body kind of spell or uh, suck the life out of a person's limbs so that they can't move or it's it's that kind of spells that you are it's not and this isn't a book of like spell scrolls this is like introduction to like the correct uh, philosophy on these spells and like how to understand this kind of magic and where it comes from and all that okay. um, so that's a little concerning so like that combined with all the stuff like about his wife that he has kept apparently for a very long time because she died several years ago uh, it's like oh no he's he seems to be trying to bring back his wife using unsavory methods it seems let's see um and you also find 
a note that has the names of the people he was traveling with. And there are more names than there were people when you saw him. And those names are crossed out. He's apparently lost a few people outside the walls. Um, but the names that you do see uh, that are not crossed out are uh, Dolan, Erythea, and Horus uh, are the three names that are not crossed out. You see other names that are crossed out, but you're like, there are three people with him when we saw him. These are probably the names of the three people. And there was a halfling. We didn't, did we ever get the halfling's name? After no, we I, rescued him? You did not. You did okay. not. Can I also jot down, I don't know if you have them, but I'll also jot down the crossed out names okay. in case one of them is the halfling's name. And then if I see the halfling, I will just say like, I will make a wild guess and pick one of those four crossed out names that looks like <laughs> it's a male halfling. The um, Dolan does is is a kind of traditional halfling name. Oh, okay. So that might be the halfling. Okay. But uh, you also notice that the place is a little dusty. It seems like he hasn't been here for a while. Okay. And I don't see anything that like would lead to another building not here uh no well since nobody's home i'll leave the office you find like he was looking for to purchase a laboratory for personal use but you don't like it so you can like find like real estate records like he's there's a few places that he looked at uh, but decided not to go with it seems because he rolled a 20. so you can tell he he was looking to buy a personal like uh, space where he could make a laboratory. Okay. And uh, it wouldn't have seemed st strange for him to do that as a doctor. Yeah. But now that you know what he's trying to do, you're like, oh dear. Okay. Um, well, once that's done, I will just make sure there's no like hidden rooms or anything, I guess. But I don't think there would be in a pre-built apartment. Um, yeah. Go ahead and roll one more investigation check for me. Uh, 15. Okay. You spend a little time looking for, like, secret panels, secret doorways, anything like that. And you don't find any evidence of, like, secret passageways or anything like that in here. And right. it seems like, unfortunately, you've, you found a little dead end in your uh, investigation. But All you right. have more information than you started with. You know the names of the other people, so it's not quite a dead end. You have some place to look. I will walk through the front door, unlocking it, and then I'll do that thing where you lock the bottom latch or bottom lock, so when you close it, it's locked, so it doesn't look like anybody came out. Sure. So you leave the room, uh, and you see the, the rest of your uh, companions standing in the hallway. So, uh, good news and bad news. Looks like Dr. Foyas is trying to buy a laboratory to potentially bring back his deceased wife using necromancy. You say kind of like a look of disgust on Emmy's face. Of course he would do something like that. He was always a weird one. But if he was trying to do that, then why was he at your mother's? That's the question. Maybe because he saw me, but I think those obelisks were sources of power, weren't they? Uh, they certainly seem to be. So maybe his he's trying to use the obelisks as a source of power to do this spell, whatever spell it is. Mm. I am actually going to retroactively say there is one more thing you find. You find that he seemed to have been doing research on the Shadowfell. Okay. He is also doing research on the Shadowfell. Which is where the mist is coming from. I mean, him and one of those sources of power don't seem like a good mix. Whatever he's trying to do probably won't end well for any of us. We should not let him bring whatever is outside of these walls into the city. This is the only safe haven left, and if he brings that power into the city, everyone is doomed. Well, we need to find him because there was nothing in there. I did get the names of the other three that were with him. Dolan, Arithia, and Horus. So if we see them, at least we know who they are. I mean, our best bet to find them is maybe Malira, because, I mean, she has a lot of contacts in the city, so there might be somebody that could help us, like a detective, to track them down, something, because he's clearly not been at work, he's clearly not been at home, so this is a big city, 
we're not finding them on our own. And I don't think he can leave the city without going through the guards first. He's obviously left the city multiple times, and nobody's supposed to leave the city. But he still had to go through the guards, because he went through the guards to get back inside. Did he, though? We don't know that. He might have a secret entrance, just like we have our special entrance. Didn't they enter? Our special entrance is the guard. We did not see them enter. Our special entrance is just Malira. I thought we saw them ahead of us. Oh, you saw them heading back towards the city, but you never saw them actually go into the city. Okay. The only reason we know they're in the city is because they talked to Rissa's mom. An interesting mystery. Perhaps next episode, you will discover the answers to your questions. And perhaps uh, we will have that banquet next episode. (laughs) I'm looking forward to it. Was that yeah. just, Wait, there's a banquet? We haven't mentioned the banquet. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yet. right. Yeah, we haven't mentioned yeah, that. Either, either I think Arissa know about this. Uh, real quick, uh, but right before we wrap up, I'm going to just kind of. Uh, we're. I'm assuming we're all kind of sad, still standing around having this conversation. Right before the cut, uh, I will look up with just like shock in my face and go, "Oh my god, it makes sense now!" And I will reach into my pocket and I will pull out the soiled robe that I woke up in this morning. I had a wet dream, and now I can summon fish! Oh, God. <laughs> it if... all makes sense now! Oh, God. Why did you carry that? I hate everything. <laughs> Why do you think that's staying in? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to leave all of this in, including <laughs> us admonishing Greg for this. <laughs> I mean, it's bad. <laughs> Let the world know. Yeah. Oh, jeez. So that he can't be hired for another D&D game ever again. <laughs> you never work in this town again. Not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out Behold Clear Light, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition actual play game. This world was brought to you by Ryan, played by a group of friends who are just looking to have fun and share our love for the tabletop world. Every other Thursday, we will release a new episode of Behold Clear Light, on the off weeks, I join other members of the TTRPG community, and we play mostly non-D&D games and it is one-shots. You can also check out my random discussions on topics on the D&D and TTRPG world with guests on Mondays. If you enjoyed this, please don't hesitate to reach out on Twitter at beholder to no one Also, give us a review on iTunes or Podchaser, and follow us on Podbean, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Keep being awesome. We'll see you next time. Bye!